hives on a really warm day. There's a lot of buzzing coming this way around because it's very muddy. Wow, look at them all in hive number one. That's insane. A lot of activity and look at all the dead bees below. Dead dead bee bodies in the in, in the water right below the hive. So let's see. Middle hive. Not too much ec not too much activity on this one. And not a lot of activity on this last hive, even though on other mild days I've seen a lot of activity bees coming in and out on this hive. So, interesting. Um, I'm in front of the beehives. I've got three hives that I'm overwintering. Whoop, one just flew by. And uh, so I'm kind of sharing my experience of transitioning from keeping bees in the North Carolina region up to a 9,000 foot elevation Colorado mountain environment. So it's a big learning curve. So I'm sharing with you guys on, my, on our channel about uh, what I'm learning in the process and the transition between, you know, um, pretty uh, mild beekeeping weather um, to more extremes where you deal with high winds and long winters and lots of snow and wild animals that can um, affect the hive. So if you're interested in this kind of content, definitely subscribe to the channel. If you're thinking about keeping bees, if you're thinking about keeping bees in the mountains or keeping bees in cold weather areas where you have really long winters, I'm really troubleshooting and sharing with you guys what's working for me at uh, a 9,000 foot elevation, 9,000 plus, and also a winter that starts in October and the bees don't start flying again, collecting pollen until May. So it's a really long season, but you know, we are in March and this is the third winter I've had beehives. And this is the third year I have not lost a single hive. That's a better track record than what I had in North Carolina. So just putting that out there. <laughs> So definitely, yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you're finding useful information about keeping bees and uh, let me know what you think, what's been working for you guys. So um, yeah, gotta take a look in those hives and see what's going on. I've got all of this hard candy sugar for the bees. So it, it's kind of like emergency winter feed when you're not really sure what they've got left. I can kind of sprinkle this in the hive and they can just eat it up directly. That's what I'm gonna to try to do today is drop some of this sugar candy into the hives. There's a lot of bees flying around right now. So I know, uh, you know, one or two minutes with the, with the um, hive top off shouldn't be a problem. There's still plenty of warm sun and those hives are covered in that black insulation. So you know they're gonna stay pretty toasty in there. All right, so what I could tell at this hive, just with a quick look, is that I saw a lot of frames that were still really full of honey, and there was really no room to put any sugar candy on top, right, in this hive. I might put a little bit at the entrance, but they don't really need it. There was several, f f several frames still with honey in them that the bees were clustered around, so um, this hive seems like they're in pretty good shape. So this hive is a weaker hive from my memory. And I put a, I put an extension on the top of the hive so, I, so the insulators would fit. 
So there's definitely room to put candy. A little bit of activity. What I'm seeing here, so I had this old feeder in there as a spacer. Uh, there's some dead bees, but there's also definitely uh, a live bees crawling around in here. So what I'm going to do is put candy in this area, and then I flip over this uh, feeder since I'm not really using it as a feeder, so they have a safe place to come and get some food. Okay, so now I'm going to put this back, the spacer back on, upside down. So even though this hive doesn't have a lot of activity, I um, just feel really confident that I could witness with my own eyes a cluster of bees and, you know, they're still in there, so they're doing good. Okay, last one here. And we have bees at the end, at the uh, opening here, the ventilation. So I'm just gonna smoke them a little bit, not too crazy. This cluster is really large. That's great news. That's good, a good thing to see. And you got a really large cluster there. And what can I see for honey? Capped honey, capped honey. I think they're definitely around where the capped honey is. I can check the edges here, see if I can find a frame that... This one's got a lot of capped honey, so not a lot of room for putting feed. I can move this over a little bit, I suppose. Okay, so this hive seems to be in pretty good shape, so I'm not gonna drop any more um, feed on them. I'm just gonna close them up. So this is all really good news to me, just to see witnessing the bees in each of the hives that they've survived the winter so far. I mean, we still have uh, a couple more months of having to make sure they have enough to eat because really they're not able to feed themselves until till about May around here when the pollen comes in. But the honey stores look excellent in these two hives. And I wasn't, uh, I saw the cluster, but I wasn't really able to evaluate how much honey storage was in this hive. So I, I added the candy because I could. So I just gave them that option. Um, but definitely pleased with how they're overwintering. I was so worried about this hive because of how small they were and going into the winter and how much of a tough year they had because this is that hive that had the mouse in it. So things are looking great. I'm, I'm thrilled to see the shape that they're in and that they still have quite a bit of honey left. I mean, they definitely have at least um, enough for the rest of the month so um, until I can start feeding them. So. I guess that is the update from the, uh, from the hives. So. so definitely good news today. I can't even say how excited I am that all three hives uh, have made it. And it's just a couple more months until they'll pretty much be on their own, being able to fly around, uh, not having to worry about overwintering because I'll be feeding them up until May more regularly but they have plenty of honey right now and that is guys that wraps up the first look at the beehives after the winter that we've had and um, this is the third year that I've had bees and not lost a hive yet so good track record so far but you know with beekeeping you never know anything could happen so stay tuned guys we hope to see you at the next one bye so you can see now that I closed up the hives not as many bees flying around, so I think I just barely made my window where it's actually pleasant for the bees to be outside flying around. I think they're trying to get back into the hives now, so no more, no more crowds and clouds of bees flying around. So, and the wind's picking up a little bit. It's a little brisk. It's a little brisk. I've got a sweater on, but um, I think the bees are anxious to get back inside because 
They know there's more cold weather coming this week.